Some idiot thought they'd try to say that the Bible says that the earth is flat. And then they paste 15 verses up here that say that that's what proves it's flat. That the Bible says it. But none of these indicate it's flat at all. And in, if you know physics, it only indicates that it's possibly a sphere. And I'm about to get to them and explain them. 1 Chronicles 16.13 or 16.30 Tremble before him, all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Okay? That does not say the world is flat at all. It just says we cannot move the planet. Of course it moves in an orbit, but we can't move it. I mean, it's in orbit. If we want to move it out of that orbit, we cannot do that. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He sets them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's on them. He has set the world. Excuse me. That indicates nothing about the world being flat. I'm sorry. It doesn't. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered people of Judah from the four corners or four quarters of the earth okay oh it's flat dude that just means north south east and west you have people on the north you have people on the south in those you have the east and west on both sides that's four quarters that's all that means people believe anything I'm telling you you can't even talk logic I guarantee I can speak this and it makes perfect sense this might be like -uh! this right here it even implies it says it's circle he sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. And its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. That's like the expansion, basically. That's, that's basically matter spreading in the universe. He spreads out the northern skies over empty space. He suspends the earth over nothing. Okay, that says nothing about the world being flat. All that says is literally... There's a large sky that hovers in etherical plane of matter or dark matter, basically, in space. I mean, it doesn't say it's, anything's flat at all. He marks out the horizon on the face of the waters for a boundary between light and darkness. Okay, just because we look into the ocean and we see the border or the boundary doesn't mean the world's flat. Okay, that's all that means is over the ocean you can see the boundary. That's all that means. Okay, 24, or Job 28, 24. For he views the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. Okay, the ends of the earth is basically just the, the surface of the earth. Okay, it's, that's all it is. Alright, so basically all that is, is he sees everything under the heavens, which is the surface of the earth. The ends of the earth. He views the ends of the earth. That's the surface of the earth. Sees everything under the heavens. That's the surface of the earth. He unleashes his lightning beneath the whole heaven and sends it to the ends of the earth. He sends lightning from space or clouds onto the surface of the planet. That's all that means. It has nothing to do with the earth being flat. Why do people... People that don't believe in anything find the stupidest things to relate it to and then try to say, just relate it to the dumbest things to make it believe that the Bible is ignorant when it has a little more truth than they want to believe. You can join him in spreading out the skies hard as a mirror of cast bronze. Basically, if you join him, this is basically whenever New Jerusalem comes and everybody's taken the rapture, yada, yada, yada. You can join him in spreading out the skies. You can join him in this heaven. Basically, that's all that means. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Where does that say it's flat? Okay, all that is is if you go to the top of a mountain and you look across the planet, you're going to see everything. That's all that is. He basically was taken to a very, very, very high point so he could see everything. That's all that means. I was there when he set the heavens in place when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep. All that implies is whoever was there watched as this planet was formed. That's all that means. I watched as he set the heavens in place. Basically set the heavens in place by creating a edge or 
surface of a planet. Okay, that's how that relates to the other ones. It relates perfectly to a surface of a planet. When the earth and all its people quake, it is I who holds its pillars firm. I really don't know where the hell that comes from as being a flat earth at all. All I can see that as is God holds the planet together. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established, firm and secure. All that means is you got a firm, secure planet that's been established. Ooh, it's so flat! He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. Okay? That basically means that the earth is sitting on something. And that's the etherical orbit that it's in. It can't be moved out of that orbit. Technically, there's no orbital decay that Earth even sustains. But you've got to know cosmology. To understand the Bible, you really got to understand cosmology and astrophysics. If you don't, all these other guys just understand numbers. They don't understand astrophysics. They just understand numbers. There's a difference. If you understand an engine and you're a mechanic, you don't need to know all the math behind the engine. You can go out there and take an engine apart and put it back together. But a guy that understands all the math of an engine goes out there, what the hell is he going to do? He doesn't even know where to start when it comes to taking apart or even putting together the engine. He just knows all the math. He doesn't know the mechanics of it at all. That's the difference between me and an astrophysicist. I know the mechanics of the universe and how they work. That's why I, uh, I identified the God particle and solved dark matter and all the other things. Okay, I know how the mechanics of it work. The numbers are irrelevant if you know how the mechanics of it work. The mechanics just prove everything. Okay? All I did was prove everything. I worked in reverse. I took all the proof from all the numbers and worked in reverse and proved all the numbers to be right. And actually even solved some of the numbers that they didn't understand, like gravity. Now all this says is, After I saw four angels standing at the corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or any tree. They were just on every quadrant. They were in the north, in the south, in the east, and in the west. Okay? And technically, I'm going to throw this out there because it sounds weird. I'm just going to throw it out there. Everything I've read and figured out from the Bible, these angels or these spirits are gigantic spacecraft. Everything that the Bible describes about them or says about them describes a spacecraft. So none of these indicate that the world is flat at all. I don't know why anyone would even relate that to those 15 verses. I don't know. Because they don't understand the Bible and they're trying to prove that it's fake. And they're so anal retentive on doing that that they'll come up with anything. They'll find a word like dog turd in the Bible and then try to say that that describes everything in a cat's ass. See what I'm saying? They, they say the most ignorant stuff. Okay? When I can totally prove all this stuff just from I guess the injuries I sustained in this accident that my abstract and logical analytical thinking is off the chart. Okay, I can explain. That's why I figured all this out.